السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers and Sisters تقبل الله أعمالنا وأعمالكم في هذا الشهر الكريم We're gonna give it a few minutes until everyone can join We are back Alhamdulillah uh, We took a short break for the night of Qadr uh, so we can do some amal Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen now we are back and inshallah we continue with our lessons uh, I hope you all done your amal for the night of Qadr uh, and you got the benefits of this uh, night. We are in the end of the, the last days of the holy month of Ramadan and uh, inshallah we make the most out of this month. It's a truly uh, blessed month, uh, the month of forgiveness and month of Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen <clears throat> Mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala It went very fast uh, Just a few days and uh, it will be finished uh, Laylatul Qadr uh, is a favor uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Blessing in a great month and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it in the Quran al-Kareem Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alf shahr it is truly a night that is uh, better, greater than 1,000 months, 80 years, uh, in other calculation, 80 years. Um, so far, we discussed many of the lessons, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. We covered many of the topics that it's in the book, uh, Today, inshallah, we'll be speaking about one of the diseases of the soul uh, or diseases of the heart. Uh, we spoke about jealousy. Uh, we spoke about uh, repentance. Uh, we spoke about sincerity. Uh, and today, inshallah, something very important. And that is um, somehow connected with what we're doing in uh, this time of the of the year in the blessed month of ramadan and there is some people when they uh, do the amal of layal al qadr or they read some quran and um, uh, they participate in some various of the amal or worship uh, they have this mindset that i have done something and they are in another word they are proud of themselves uh, and that leads for them to um, truly fall uh, because um, they think this is enough. Uh, I have done more than anyone else and they compare notes with, with each other. That how many times have you recited the Quran? How many times have you recited the Alif Sita? How many times have you recited the Ajaw Shal Kabir? Uh, I stayed up uh, all nights of Qadr. I stayed up uh, most of the, most of the nights of the month of Ramadan. So they, in another word, they become proud of themselves, of their amal. And today we want to talk about uh, this part of the uh, of the uh, of arrogance, of um, uh, proudness, or pride. Uh, it, it is in Arabic al takabbur uh, that is not a good quality that a person can have. Um, and that leads for him uh, into destruction. Uh, if he or she, they are, in a, they are proud of themselves to a point they think they are better than other people. What the holy month of Ramadan represents, and um, that is one of the beautiful magnificence of this month is this that the month of Ramadan, the holy month of Ramadan, leads you to become a better person, more sincere, um, more into the religious um, uh, worship that you are doing something for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for your own benefits. So if you are uh, one of those people that is proud of their deeds or proud of their actions, and so on and so forth. This is what we want to talk about today. We are getting closer to the end of the holy month of Ramadan. Even though we have reached the holy nights of Qadr and the holy nights of this month, but we still have to think that I can do much more than this. And I shouldn't be proud of all my actions. 
But what I should be thinking of is how to step one uh, more forward step in my life and become a better person. So one of the things of, of a, that is a destructive um, behavior of a person who is proud is this, that they never think they are in need of improvement. They always think they are uh, what uh, complete in a, in a sense. Uh, they are, uh, you know, uh, for example, I am uh, complete in my worship. There is no one that has preceded me. And they make excuses in different various uh, places that I have done much more than others. And I think that um, I have achieved all, all of that what's needed to be done and so on and so forth. On that note, we start the lesson, inshallah. Uh, before we start, we recite Dua Al-Faraj for the hasty appearance of Imam Sahab Al-Asri wa Al-Zaman. Ajallah Ta'ala Farajahu Al-Sharif. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma kulla waliyika al-hujjat ibn al-Hasan salawatuka alayhi wa ala abayh fi hadhi al-saha wa fi kulli saha waliyan wa hafidha wa qaidan wa nasira wa dalilan wa ayna hatta tuskinahu ardaka tawha wa tumata'ahu wa fiha tawila ya rabb al-Husayn haq al-Husayn ishfi sadr al-Husayn bidhuhur al-Hujjah Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-Tayyibin al-Tahirin Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala muhammad wa ajjil farajhum wa ala adahum ajma'in So, at-takabbur is the topic of today, insha'Allah, and uh, it is arrogance. Uh, and the meaning of this is, if you look in your books, uh, the books, um, the book of Akhlaq al-Adab al islamiyah you find it to be uh, topic um, 36, At-Takabbur, wa huwa ta'ali ala al-akhareen wa rawiyat al-nafs an qadrha fawqa qadr al-ghayr. Uh, just a reminder that when I recite the Arabic part, I will be translating it. Uh, so I will not just be reciting it and going on with it. I will be translating it as much as possible. Sometimes I can't give you the exact meaning of the words, but I try my best to get you close enough to what it means. وَهُوَ التَّعَالِي عَلَى الْآخَرِينَ وَرَأْيَةِ النَّفْسِ أَنَّ قَدْرَهَا فَوْقَ قَدْرَ الْغَيْرِ that you think that you are better than other people. Uh, that your nafs is much higher than anyone else. You are uh, a better character, a better person than anyone else. وَهُوَ مِن نَتَائِجِ الْعُجْبِ فَإِنَّهُ إِذَا أَعْجَبَ بِنَفْسِهِ أَوْ بِعَلْمِهِ أَوْ بِعَمَلِهِ أَوْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ أَسْبَابِهِ إِسْتَعْظَمَ نَفْسَهُ وَتَكَبَّرُ so we'll be speaking about this um, throughout the lesson that everyone is proud of one thing or another. So in this sentence, what it says, uh, that means he's, he's proud of, of his ilm, of his knowledge, or of his actions, uh, or any, anything else. Everyone is proud of something. They find uh, that they are you know, good at it, or they are blessed with it, and they become that means what? That he sees himself to be greater than anyone else. That becomes, you know, I'm much greater than uh, so on, uh, this person and that person. Uh, and he becomes arrogant in his actions, you know, arrogant in his, in his, um, in his comings and goings. Uh, and takabbur, and this is the bad part of takabbur, that arrogance is this that imtina and kabul al haqq mu'anada, that he, you are rejecting haqq, you're rejecting truth, you're rejecting it. In a sense that you say, no, no, I don't want this, because you are so much arrogant, you are so much proud of yourself, that you reject truth. And this happened throughout the history that many people, even though they know, they know they are wrong, but they are so proud and they are so arrogant that they reject truth. 
They don't accept it. So you find in the Holy Quran, there are many of the ayat, verses they speak about this. Uh, for example, one of them being this ayah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Fatqulu abwaba jahannam khalidina fiha, falabiqsa mathwal mutakabbirin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever he mentions a mutakabbir, a person who is what? Arrogant. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings with it a punishment. So you find that more than 35 angles are being mentioned in the Holy Quran about takabbur. So enter the gates of hell to abide eternal within, stay in the hell, in the inferno, and how rich it is the residence of the arrogant. That means a person who is arrogant, he will end up in hell. This is one of the ayah, this is one of the verses that covers the, the outcome, uh, what will happen to the ones who are arrogant, to the ones who are proud. So if you look in the first chapters of the Holy Book, uh, the second chapter, that is Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the first sin. So you find that pride is to reject the truth and despise the others. This is what pride is. This is the, the, the bad part of it, the bad angle of it, that the person who is proud, he rejects truth. He rejects truth. He rejects haq. He doesn't accept it in any way. And he's prepared to make up a lot of things because he's proud to think himself that he's better than anyone else. He will not take, he will not budge in. He will not take anything into account and he belittles others. And if you see the story of Adam and Shaitan, Adam and Satan in the Holy Book, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions of the first sin the first scene in the holy book, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the second chapter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, الْكَافِرِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, if you uh, read of, of the beginning of the creation of human beings and the creation of Adam and Eve, Adam and Hawa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks with the angels. This is before the creation of Adam and Eve. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks with the angels. This is after, as, as one of the traditions mentioned, um, the war between the Nasnas uh, with, uh, with the jinn. And after the war ended, um, uh, and then the war between the jinn and the angels. Uh, when the war ended, and there was a lot of uh, dead people, one of them, one of the good people of that war was shaitan. Shaitan was on the good side. And subhanAllah, you see, shaitan was on a good side. In these uh, first stories, when you read, you find shaitan being on the good side, and shaitan was taken to the heavens, and then shaitan uh, with his worship and with his ibadah he was welcomed as one of the angels and he wasn't an angel he was um he was a jinn and jinn are created from fire angels are created from light and human beings are created from dust uh, or mud if you want to call it uh, turab uh, so everyone is created differently so the angels are created from light Nur, jinn are created from fire, and human beings are created from dust. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he saw all this happening and everything was uh, uh, going in, the, in this direction, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the angels, I'll be creating a new race. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, he was, when he said this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was said to them by the angels that why are you creating anything else? We are worshipping you. We, we worship you. We obey you. And you don't need to create anything. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, no, I know what you don't know. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam. Adam After he created Adam, he taught him the names. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought Adam 
in front of the angels and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God the Almighty, ordered the angels, ordered all of what was in, uh, at the, in the present time to bow down before Adam. فسجدوا. So prostrate before Adam. They all did, except for Iblis. We know this story. We heard of this story. We always hear it. And we, because this is the beginning of what uh, brings us to become enemies of Shaitan. Shaitan here, Iblis and Abalisa, he declared war on uh, the human beings. So we said to them, prostrate before Adam. Now, there is a couple of things that we can mention here. One of them being is this. Is Adam God? No. Okay, so why do the angels need to prostrate before Adam? So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't just want a person to stand and pray and pray and pray and pray. And when it comes to the time to obey God, they don't obey God. So it comes to a command, they refuse this command. And there is a couple of examples throughout history. One of them being here. So, And mention when we said to the angels, prostrate before Adam. So they prostrated before Adam, except for Iblis. He refused and he refused and was arrogant and became of the disbelievers. He refused and he was proud. And he was one of the unbelievers. So in another translation, you find this to be proud. And one says arrogant and one says proud. Anyway, it's takbar. Why? In another verse in Surah Al-Araf, you find that he said, You created for me from fire and he created him from tin. From, uh, tin is, uh, is uh, mud, uh, dust, if you want to. In another word, turab and water. Turab means uh, dirt and water, dust and water. So it becomes mud. And of course, fire is greater than mud. Fire is greater than dust. So why am I uh, prostrating before Adam? So here is Takbar. He became proud of himself. That I am better than him. So why am I doing this? It's about being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah wants to see that are you obedient to him? Are you obeying him? Or are you disobeying him? And here he failed the test. Iblis, he said, no, I will not do this. And he's much weaker than me. So why am I doing this? So he refused. Was takbar. He refused. And he became proud, became arrogant and he did not accept it. So that brings us to this. Um, throughout history, you find people like that. Pharaoh with Musa. The Pharaoh, Ramses II with Musa ibn Imran, he was proud and he did not um, submit to Musa ibn Imran until his last moments. And Allah said, no, this is it. You can't just on your last moment, you say, I believe in the God of Musa and Harun. When he was uh, about to be uh, drowned, he said, yes, now I believe. Because he saw what's happening in front of him. Uh, that wasn't it. He had all this time and he did not submit. And you missed all the chances. You find Namrud, Namrud and Ibrahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives these people a lot of chances. But because they are proud of their actions, they are arrogant, they are mutakabbirin, and they see themselves greater than others, they never, never, never submit. And you find Iblis one of them. Iblis being the first one. So that is why he's called the first sin. Iblis the first one. And then throughout history, Pharaoh and Musa, Namrud and Ibrahim, and of course, you find this with Amir al-Mu'minin, alayhi. Amir al-Mu'minin, when uh, we, we were last week in his martyrdom uh, anniversary, Amir al-Mu'minin, when he was declared to be the successor of Rasulullah, many people failed the test. No, 
I will not uh, believe in Ali. I'm, some of them came, and in my, one of my lectures last week, I mentioned this, um, uh, it's broadcast on YouTube, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Amir al muminin and 110,000 Muslims that gathered in Ghadir home, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he announced it, man kuntu mawla fahada, Ali al mawla, Allah mawali man wali, adi man ada, wansur man nasara, waqdul man khadala, whosoever I'm their leader, Ali is the leader. So 110,000 Muslims, they heard this, and every one of them uh, that came from different towns or different cities, different countries, when they went back to Yemen, when they went back to Damascus, when they went back to uh, uh, Arabian Peninsula at the time, Hejaz, they went back to many other uh, areas at the time, they told others that Ali was chosen as a successor of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We find two individuals coming to the Prophet. Uh, one of them was very arrogant and he said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is this from you or from God? That you, uh, you were not happy with whatever we submitted to you. You told us to pray, we are praying. You told us to pay zakat, we are paying zakat. You told us to go to hajj, we went to hajj. You told us to uh, uh, fast, we are fasting. That wasn't enough. And this person was really arrogant. You can, when you read this, you can see that this person will never submit. He said to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you were never happy with this until you came and you raised the hand of your cousin Ali in Ghadir Qom and you declared him as your successor. Is this from you or from God? So he's questioning Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Is this from you? Is this the personal thing that you had to choose Ali, your cousin, as a successor? Oh, this is from God. And of course, then yantaqa alin hawa in huwa illa wahir nuha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Amir al Mumnin to be the successor of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he announced in Ghadir Khum, as the ayah came, that if you don't do this, is as if you haven't done any of your, uh, of your message. That you have to declare Ali ibn Talib as your successor. So is this from you or from God? And of course, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, yes, of course, this is from God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered me to, to announce it, that Ali is my successor. I mean, who is greater than Ali? Ali is the greatest after me. So this person came out of the mosque and the ayah says that he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the punishment. He said, if this is true, let the punishment come to me right now. Adab come to me right now and I die on the, on the spot. And before he reached his mule, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to him an adab and killed him on the spot. You find this person who is arrogant, who is mutakabbir, um, uh, and he will never budge in. Yeah, no, 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 no. Is this from you or from God? He, he brings Rasulullah and he takes him under question. And I can't believe this, that this is not something personal. This is not from God. This is from you. You had to come and bring your cousin and your son-in-law and so on and so forth to be your successor. That you have to keep it in the family. And of course, this is not true. Another person you find, he came, he asked a question, Salman al-Muhammadi, Allah ta'ala alayhi. He, he narrates this hadith. This person came, he asked Rasulullah, but he was very respectful. And Rasulullah said to him, for everything, there is a master. For the months that we have in the, the calendar, the holy month of Ramadan is the master of all other months. Shah Ramadan al Karim wa Sayyid al Shuhur. For all books, the master of all books, Sayyid of all books, is the Holy Quran. For the birds, eagle is the master of all birds. It's a beautiful hadith, uh, and inshallah. I, uh, if I have a chance, I'll go through it next time uh, in length. It's a beautiful hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The eagle is the master of all of the birds. And lion is the master of all animals. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I am Sayyid, master of all of the prophets. Khatamul anbiya wa sayyiduhum. 
And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned here, he said, and Ali is the master of all of the awsiya, and Allah chose Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib, to be my successor. This person he submitted. Because you find arrogance is the cause of your doom. If you are so proud of yourself and your actions and you are arrogant, that you will never submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Iblis is the first victim of this. And it's the first sin that Amir al-Mumin salam Allah alayhi, in one of his servants, he says this about Iblis Labadis. This is about the first sin. You should take a lesson from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did with shaitan. This is one of the uh, sermons of Amir al-Mumin salam Allah alayhi. Namely, he nullified his great acts and extensive efforts on account of the vanity of one movement, or one moment. Although Shaitan had worshipped Allah for 6,000 years, whether by the reckoning of this world or the next world is not known. So Shaitan, Iblis, 6,000 years, he worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who now can remain safe from Allah. After shaitan, by committing a similar disobedience, none at all Allah, the glorified, cannot let a human being into paradise if he does the same thing for which Allah turned out from, from it an angel. He commanded, or he commanded for the inhabitants in the sky and on the earth is the same. There is no friendship between Allah and any individual out of his creation to as to give him license for any undesirable thing which he has led or held unlawful for all the walls that is pride and arrogance and if you see six thousand years six thousand years down the drain for his pride and arrogance shaitan and iblis over that moment, and he, uh, he disobeyed it. He said, no, I will not prostrate before Adam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, then go out. You are cast away from this, uh, from the skies. And then the whole enormity started. Uh, and he declared war on the humans. Before he came out from the skies, he said, yes, I will drag them all to hell. And you see in the Quran, Allah mentions, Inna shaitan lakum mubin. Truly, shaitan is your number one enemy. Shaitan is your enemy. In the, in the Quran, Allah mentions this many times. So, 6,000 years, this uh, shaitan, Iblis al Abalisa, who was called once Tawus al Malaika, he worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Imam says, whether by the reckoning of this world or the next world is not known. So this 6,000 years, he worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for one arrogant act, for one pride moment. That I am created of this and he's created from uh, I'm created of fire, I'm greater than him. And you see this in the community that many people are like that for different reasons. I will go through this inshallah in a moment that you see many people uh, going back to 6,000 years, they pray throughout the nights of Shahr Ramadan al-Mubarak, Salat al-Taraweeh, but they don't accept the wilayah of Amir al-Mumin, sallallahu alayhi. And it's order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all that Salat, all that Salat is going to be accepted because you haven't done what is ordered from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the recitation of the Quran Kareem, all the ad'iyya, and the prayer, and the hajj, and the zakat, and, 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 and because you are so proud, and you are so arrogant, that you will not submit to the wilayah of Amir al-Mumin, that brings you down. Even though you 6,000 years here, you find. Allah doesn't just want worship. It's not about the quantity of it. And many people think, well, I'm going to read 50 times Quran al Karim and I'm going to pray hundreds of raka'at. But what is important and is the order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and if that is the wilayah of Amir al Mumini, no, I will not accept that. It's not a choice that you can make and you can say, okay, because I 
think myself to be better than this, and I think there are the other individuals in history that are better than this, you know, and they're not, uh, and I submit to them, I don't want to submit to Ali ibn Abi Talib. 6,000 years down the drain, because of his act at that moment, that I am better than him. You, you created me from fire, and you created him from mud. How many people said this throughout history? that I'm greater than you because of my beauty, because of my wealth, because of my knowledge, because of my power, different things. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam talks about arrogance and about pride that he says in the books of a hadith, لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبي حب من خردل من كبر No one will enter heaven of those people who are arrogant if they have a bit of arrogance, an atom of arrogance. Pride. And Imam al Sadiq says, A man inquired from Imam al Sadiq, what is the lower level of this belief? Imam said, It is pride. Pride. So, reasons of pride. So, these are some of the reasons, and there are, you might think there are many others uh, that you find personally. Um, you can add to the list. They are, this is some of them uh, that are mentioned in the book, Akhlaq uh, Adab al and from other sources. So, Naqs or Dilla fil Insan. So, what is Naqs or Dilla? It's def a deficiency in ethics or lack of. So, lack of what? Because he's la he has lack of something. You know, he, there is a void, there is something missing. So, he has to become, you know, with the takabbur, he comes with that attitude that he becomes mutakabbir. So, Ali Imam Sadaq Salamullah who said, Mamin Rajul takabbar aw tajabbar illa ladalla wajadaha fi nafsi. So, what does that mean? He finds something, a deficiency in something, there's a lack of something in him. So, to cover it, to cover that, he is proud, you know, he shows himself to be better than others, he's arrogant. So, Al-Ujb, فَمَنْ أَعْجَبَ بِنَفْسِهِ أَوْ وَبِعَلْمِهِ أَوْ بِشَيْءَ آخر إِسْتَعْظَمَ ذَلِكَ فِي نَفْسِهِ وَتَكَبَّرُ Self-consent. Uh, consent or conceit. Um, proud of himself, of his actions. And that is Ujb. That he's always, you know, proud of his actions. That is why we spoke about, if you remember, in one of the, our lessons, we spoke about sincerity. If a person who is sincere, and this is one of them here, uh, he doesn't have that. Because he doesn't have that ujb, that I did something, look at me. And he's proud of his actions. Uh, number three is haqd wal hasad lil akhirin fa yatajabbar wa takabbar alayhim muhawala minhu fi iqna'i nafsihi annahu afdala minhum sha'na. We spoke about this, if you remember, in the first lessons. We said there is always dots that we want to connect to see the whole picture. So we spoke about jealousy in one of our lessons. Uh, and one of the reasons for a person to become proud and become arrogant is jealousy. Another reason is haqd. Haqd is hatred. Hatred or jealousy. So why does he or she have pride, uh, that are arrogant, is because they are jealous of the other person. So how to cover that missing part? They become arrogant. They become proud. You know, they have pride. To cover that, to show them that I am better than you, so they have to show they are arrogant. So this is one of the reasons of a person who becomes arrogant, who is proud. So, haqd wal hasad al akharin, haqd, hatred and jealousy to others, fayatachabbar wa yatakabbar. So he becomes mutakabbar, he becomes uh, arrogant. Mahawala minhu fi iqna'i nafsi, annahu afdala minhum sha'na. So he wants to convince himself that I'm better than others. So he has that. Attitude that I am better than others. How to show it? Uh, I have to be mutakabbir. You know, look at me. I'm better than any others. Uh, and he's not. She's not. 
if you look deep down, they are not any of this. So uh, pride is this, that brings you to this dhill, as you said, dhill, uh, nuts, uh, is that, um, you know, you are not liked by any other people. Uh, for a person to be proud and arrogant, and we're talking about arrogance here. We spoke about arrog uh, proudness or pride being positive and negative. There are two. Here we're speaking about the negative. In our previous lesson, we spoke about the positive side of pride. Pride can be, you know, a positive uh, attitude for a person to have. You know, his pride, he has pride to, to put his hand uh, for others to give him anything. He's, he has proud, you know, he has that um, attitude. Uh, this is not takabbur. This is not takabbur. And we're talking about the negative side of it. So, number four is riya wa adam al ikhlas lillahi azza wa jal. Wa illa law annahu akhlasa fi amalihi latadalla lillahi azza wa jal. Wa lakin la anna amalahu lil nasi yatajabbar so here it's insincerity. So the opposite of sincerity is insincerity. That because he does everything for others and he's not doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he becomes here what? Mutakabbir. He becomes, you know, proud of his actions because he's not doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's doing it for the people to, to you know, wow them, to, to, you know, become proud of himself to fill up that void. So he shows that attitude of takabbur. So these are the four. Number one is naqs of the fil nas, fil insan. Number two is ujb. Number three, haqd wal hasad lil akhirin. And number four is riya. Min nataj al takabbur. So some of the results of this, of takabbur, of a person who is um, proud and a person who is arrogant is this. Number one, intishar al bughdi wal kurhi bayn al nas. So it's the spread of hatred among people. As we said, hatred and jealousy is one of the reasons a person becomes arrogant. So Amir al Mu'minin sallallahu says in the hadith, Tamaratul kibr al masabba. So, in other words, the Imam is here saying, when a person is mutakabbir, he's arrogant, he's even prepared to curse the other person. So, bringing back to Amir al Mumin, you find they cursed Ali ibn Abi Talib for 80 years. 80 years they cursed Amir al Mumin, is because of that arrogance, you know, that pride that it is not needed in any place here. 80 years, from the era of Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan until Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, the curse Amir al-Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for 80 years. Amir al-Mu'mineen, the commander of the faithful, they curse him on the manabr. So if you speak with them, why? Because he's so much proud of his actions, he thinks he's the best among the human beings, that he's prepared to question the personality and the favors and the blessings that Allah bestowed on Amir al muminin and he brings Amir al muminin down to this part. I tell you there are many stories throughout history that, for example, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, when he heard them cursing Amir al muminin salam Allah alayhi, he talked with the people, he said to them, who are you cursing? Who are you cursing? Who is this Ali? Because I only see one Ali in the history book. And that is the cousin of Rasulullah, the husband of Fatima al Zahra, sallallahu alayhi, the father of Imam al Hassan, Imam al Hussein, and Lady Zainab, alayhi wasalam, uh, Fatih of Khaybar, the conqueror of Khaybar, the killer of Marhab, the killer of Amr ibn Abdawid, the successor of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wasalam, Rasulullah Sittim, Aliyan ma al Haq, wal Haq ma Ali. Ali ma al Quran, wal Quran ma Ali. Ana Madina tul Ain, ma Ali yam babuha, faman arad al Madina ta wal Hikma ta faliati ha min babiha. Ali anta minni bi manzilati haruna min Musa illa anna hula nabiya ba'di. Ali, 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 I see all Ali in the books, it's all 
in his favor. It's all about talking about who Ali was as a good person. Ali, 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 Ali. And yet I see that you are cursing that, this Ali. He said, yes, we are cursing this Ali. It's because of this arrogancy that brings your person down to this part that he's prepared to curse Amir al-Mu'min the commander of the faithful. It's because of this pride that I'm, I will never budge him. I will never, never, never submit because my ancestors didn't, they, they didn't, they didn't submit, so I'm also not going to submit. This happened with all prophets when they came and they said to them, don't worship the idols. I said, why? Why? My ancestors worship these idols. And we are proud of our heritage, and we are proud of, of our history. So because my fathers, they worship this, you know, stone, I'm also going to worship this stone. So same thing happens to Amir al-Mumin, Because my ancestors, they did not submit to him. And because of my arrogancy, and because of my proudness, because I'm proud of my actions, I'm proud of who I am, whoever what I have, and who... I look after, and they will never budge in, they will never submit, because a proud person will reject truth. This is what is a grave danger to this proud person. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you have it, you will never enter heaven. You will never ever enter paradise. Why? Because an arrogant person rejects truth. A person who is mutakabbir, he will never, never submit to haq. And this is what Amir al Mumini had to deal with. Until today, they are, they are praying Salatul Taraweeh, they read Quran, they uh, know of the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They call themselves to be such and such of the followers of Rasulullah. But when it comes to Amir al Mumini, no. So this is one of the grave dangers of this that the spread of hatred among people. Because I don't like other per person, I have this hatred toward them, I have to show myself to be, you know, higher than them and look down at them. Look down and belittle them. الإنسان, الناس, so another one of the natija of the result of the mutakabbar. And uh, so... A mutakabbar, he always thinks, well, because I'm proud, I'm showing myself to be proud. And because I have this pride, this takabbar, everyone will respect me. But here you see, it's actually the opposite of it. And Amir al-Mumin says, Laysa li mutakabbar sadiq. He will never have, never have friends. And his loss of respect among people, he loses respect among people. No one wants to deal with the person who is arrogant who is proud of himself, who is mutakabbar. You don't want to deal with anyone like that. Why you want to deal with a person who submits to truth when it's truth? He will apologize for his, for his mistakes. He, he is, you know, he's not proud of it. You know, he knows there is always room for improvement. Uh, mutakabbar is not like that. Uh, mutakabbar always thinks he's complete. There's no way that he needs improvement. There is, there is weaknesses here and there. We'll be speaking about that in a minute. So number three, يعتبر التكبر معصية للخالق العظيم وعدم شكره على نعمته التي أنعم بها عز وجل عليه أمير المؤمنين سلام الله عليه says in حديث الحرص والكبر والحسد دعاء إلى التقحم في الذنوب. Pride is considered as a great sin. And Amir المؤمنين says الحرص, greediness, a person who is greedy and kibr, kibr is this arrogancy, and hasad, al hasad, sorry, al hasad, that is jealousy, dawa ala taqahum fi dunub. So this is one of the sins of being greedy, being mutakabbir, being proud, have becoming arrogant, and of course, jealousy. Number four is التكبر نشر للرذيلة والأخلاق السيء Arrogance, uh, of course, spreading vice and bad morals in the community. A person who is arrogant. And you find sometimes, unfortunately, the reason I chose this is that you find 
there are some communities because of one person, one person being so much proud of himself or herself in the community. And if this is going to be a person who is in charge of the community, in charge of a center, in charge of a mosque, in charge of a Husseini, in charge of a school, because they are so proud of themselves and so they are so arrogant, they bring the whole community down. And they will never see what is needed in the community because they, they think that you know, complete. There's no need for improvement. So it spreads out vice, it spreads out bad morals. And we hear that sometimes when you go um, to some communities, they say, yes, we wanted to build such and such, you know, a school, a community center. We wanted to uh, teach, but because one person came and he, he refused or because of his actions, we had to abort, abort the whole mission. And unfortunately, you find this happening in the communities because of one person who is mutakabbar. So it spreads out as a disease that spreads out throughout the community, throughout the community. So it's not needed. Uh, number five, maqt Allah azza wa jalla mutakabbar. And Rasul sallallahu alayhi says, al-amqat al-nas al-mutakabbar. God Almighty says, Allah loathes the arrogant. Allah doesn't like the one who is arrogant. This is number six I want to speak about. Refusal of improvement or to be guided. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends 124,000 prophets from Adam, Abu al-Bashar, to Khatam al-Anbiya, and they tell the community, they tell the people, the tribes, they tell the families, La ilaha illallah, say there is no God except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yastakbirun. Because of the arrogancy, they said no, they will never ever say that. Innahum kanu idha qila lahum, la ilaha illallah yastakbirun. This is why istikbar, takabbur, it's not a person's best friend. It's actually an enemy that will bring him down. That he refuses to improve. He will never say that I have this you know, deficiency. I have this room for improvement. He will always say, she will always say, I'm complete. There is no way that I need any of this. I'm done. I'm full. And they refuse any advice, they refuse any hidayah, any guidance. And this is what happened. This one verse can tell you how bad this is. That indeed they, when it was said to them, there is no deity about Allah, there's no God except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were arrogant. They said no, they did not accept this. In the time of the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he said to them, say la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah tuflihu. Say there is no God except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They refused and they waged wars on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. In Badr, in Uhud, and even after that, the, the way they spoke to the Prophet, they, because of this takabbur, because of this Arrogancy. A person to become arrogant is a person who refuses all of this to find a room for improvement. We are nearly done. So, arrogant treatment. How can I treat this arrogancy? So, how can I treat this proudness? Be becoming proud. How can I treat it? And يعلم الإنسان أن الكبر لا يليق إلا بالله وحده. So know that Allah the Almighty is greater. Always a person who is proud and he thinks he's the greatest of the, of the people in the community always has to think, who is greater than me? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam yaqul, yaqul Allah jalla wa ala al-kibriya'u ridai wal-azamatu izari 
فمن نازعني واحدا منها القيته في النار الله سبحانه وتعالى is only entitled to be proud only Allah سبحانه وتعالى الكبرياء Allah ال... he said in this hadith hadith al-Qudsi الكبرياء ردائي so it is my rida Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wal azamatu izari faman naza'ani wahidan minhuma alqaytuhu fi an-nar whoever comes and he or she want to become proud of these their actions and become arrogant and so on and so forth i throw them in hell fire so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is only entitled to this no one else is except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the creator of the universe and how how small are we that we human beings with one virus all the world stops one virus the uh, most powerful country in the world and the wealthiest country in the world and that is the united states of america you find one virus coronavirus covid 19 that we still live in a time of darkness we still live it that we are now in the fifth month of the year in May, but you see that we don't know what will happen in a, in a one month or two months. Uh, so powerful country, they are so proud of themselves. They are proud of their heritage. They're proud of their army. They're proud of their, um, the companies they have. The whole country shut down. Uh, you find cities like in New York, Los Angeles, three months, they uh, told them again that uh, a week ago, another three months of lockdown. You find this to show you that we are weak. One virus can bring you down. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to show a person, you know, that he gives them nudges here and there to bring them back to their senses. But some people, they un understand this how great Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and how weak we are. And يَعْلَمَ الْإِنسَانَ أَنَّهُ إِذَا تَكَبَّرْ صَارَ مَنْقُوتًا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَعَذَّبَهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامِ Manquta means a person who becomes arrogant, he must know that this takabbur brings him to be مَنْقُوتًا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَعَذَّبَهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامِ He will be hated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will be or she will be in hellfire. And you know, even in the, in the community, you don't want to deal with a person who's, you know, pride uh, has, you know, overcome him. And he's proud of himself and his action and so on and so forth. And you know, the person who is always a person who is a person who is a person who is a person who is a so one of the treatments of this takabbur is always knowing there is always a room for improvement. And having this tawadu, that I can change, I can become better. I have these problems, there's a list of them. How can I become mutakabbar when I have all these weaknesses? So, another one is, إِذَا كَانَ سَبَبُ التَّكَبُّرْ هُوَ الْجَمَالِ أَوْ الْقُوَّةِ أَوْ الْغِنَى أَوْ الْعِلْمِ أَوْ النَّسَبْ فَلْيَحَدَّتَ الْإِنسَانِ نَفْسَهُ So, these are some of the things that we are proud of. One is jamal, beauty. You know, some people that are proud of their, you know, you know their beauty. Now look at me, I'm much more handsome, much more beautiful than any other person. Awal quwa. Quwa means what? The power, the strength. The thing because I have all this power, I, I'm entitled to become proud of, the, of myself. Awal ghina, all my wealth, my money. Awal ilm, all my knowledge, awal nasab. Or my family, you know, family line, family tree, my family is such and such, my, you know, I'm from this family, I'm from that family, I'm from the royal family. So, so I have to remind myself. Number one, So, so beauty, one of the reasons for a person to become arrogant, you have to remind yourself that one day I will grow up and all this face will have wrinkles and all this hair will be gray and I will become, you know, old and fragile and I lose that beauty. 
it will go away. It will go away. It will never stay. It's for a time period and it will go. That is for Jamal. This is for beauty. And how many people there were, you know, the most handsome people in, in the world. And because they thought because of their beauty can do whatever they want or they are proud of themselves. Yeah, if you look, for example, I'll give an example of a peacock. If you go to a zoo and you see the peacock moving around and, you know, opening up their feathers and showing their beauty, you know that peacock, one fox can kill it, you know. One dog can kill it. But that peacock comes and opens up and shows its beauty and look at me, look at me. But you know, there are many people throughout the, the, the history, you find them because they thought they are beautiful, they can do such and such. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds you that age will overcome. Your wrinkles will overcome you. And all that beauty will fade away. Another one, quwwah. Wal quwwah sawfa tadhab wa yadha'afu al-insan bil marad wa kibra sin. If you see in the ayat of the Quran and Kareem, if you've been reciting the Quran, you find one of the ayat, it says that you, you start with weakness. You are weak first. And then quwa, and then weakness. This is the, everyone, everyone. Weakness means what? In the beginning, you are weak. You are a baby. You are an infant. You are in need of your mother and father for them to raise you, for them to feed you, for them to change you. And then you become... A teenager, you become an adult. Uh, here, you are what? In a status of power. You are strong. And then again, you go back to the phase one. And that is weakness again. So that quwwah, that strength, that power fades away. Uh, the teeth will fall down and you become one again. Once again, you are in need of someone feeding you. You are in need of someone helping you to the bathroom. You are in need of someone taking you to the doctor. So it's a circle that comes back. First, weakness, strength, and then again, weakness. This is in the Quran and Kareem. And then another one is what? Ghina. Ghina, that is wealth. Qarun become, became arrogant. And he was prepared to accuse Musa ibn Amran, his cousin, who is a prophet of God, of adultery because he didn't want to pay zakat. That is because of his wealth, thinking because I'm wealthy, I have all the right to do all this. And you can see now, 21st century, that if you look around the world, the people that are wealthy, you, you find them to be, be arrogant. You know, the way they talk, talk and the way they act as if they are entitled to it. al ghinab and wealth is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever he wants, he will take it away from you. Whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills it, he will take it away from you. So you are not entitled to become arrogant because you have any of this. To become arrogant because of your beauty or your strength or your wealth. And the last one is al-nasab. nasab la yufidu fi yawm al-qiyama la yandhru Allah ila nasab al-nasab al-rajul wa lakin ila amalihi wa taqwa. Another one that are people now, they are proud of themselves because I come from this family. I come from this royal family. I come from that uh, country. I come from here. I come from there. As if this is going to be any benefit for them in the next life, in the hereafter. So in the next life, when you are standing in front of God to be judged, you come and say, my name is such and such, and I come from this family. So, so what? My father was Fulan. Nuh and Nabi, Salamullah alayhi, Nuh, Noah, he stands there, he will be judged and he will enter heaven, paradise, and his son will stand there and he will be judged and he will enter hellfire. He will enter in the inferno. Who? It's his son. And he, can he stand there and say, I'm the son of Nuh. So what? If, even if you're the son of the, God, of, the, of the prophet of God, even if you are a son or a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he doesn't have anything. What have you done? So, Nuh with his son. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam with his uncle Abu Lahab. Abu Lahab stands there and he says, I am the uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. I'm his uncle. So what? Even if you are his uncle, 
because of your actions you go to the inferno you go to hellfire and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam will enter paradise so the connection that we think is going to be any benefit that is the family connection or the family name or whatever it is it's not going to be any benefit it might be here and when you go to any of the offices you know to do any of your paperwork in some middle eastern countries as soon as they see you become being one of the family members of such and such they tell you you know what we get everything done for you in some countries because you be, you are from the royal family you're even entitled to you know kill mr jirubilla and take any of the wealth of the government because you are from a royal family in the day of judgment allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only judges you according to your amal your deeds and your taqwa and your piety allah judges you it doesn't matter where you're from it doesn't matter who you are who your family is it's only because of your amal and your taqwa so another one is of course qabul al-haq and imam ali ibn talib ali abdul salati was salam iqbal al-haq fa inna qabul al-haq yab'udu min al-kibar so submitting to haq to the truth that brings this pride and arrogance uh, out of your system because you are submitting you know there is something missing there is a weakness that you have and you need to submit to this truth and imam zain abidin ali abdul salatu was salam says man qala astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayhi fa laysa bimustakbir wa la jabbar inna almustakbir man yasra ala dhanb fad ghalabahu hawah fih wa athara dunyahu ala akhirati so the one who says astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayhi when you um recite dua al jawshan al kabir and i hope you all did in this night in the night of qad we recite in dua jawshan al kabir and we say this phrase subhanak ya la ilaha illa ant al ghawth al ghawth khallasna min an nar ya rab that shows how weak we are that we say to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we seek refuge to you ya allah from the hellfire we seek refuge we say that a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim we say we seek refuge from the shaytan that we are weak we need we need someone to help us and that is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who repents who says astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayhi fa laysa bi mustakbir wa la jabbar who the one who says astaghfirullah is not the one who has pride and is arrogant inna al-mustakbir man yasru ala dhanb the one who is has arrogancy who is arrogant and he's proud of himself is the one who is insistent on the sins he insists on the sins faqad ghalaba hawahu fih wa athara dunyahu ala akhiratih because of his arrogance he is prepared to go through all of this this is the end of the lesson for takabbur and we go through some uh, some of the questions and we conclude brothers and sisters this is that uh, can you explain one of the hasan rada can you explain can you please explain a little more about the war between angels and jinn what is it about why were they fighting okay inshallah in another lesson i talk about that okay i can see there is a lot of questions about the war between the angels and jinn that's good that you are interested in such a thing it is an interesting topic um we have this in bahar anwar we have some of the hadith that talk about this inshallah i if i found time next class uh, that we have um on um, i think thursday or friday 
um, inshallah we'll mention what uh, the war was and the time period. We don't have that much detail about it. We have some uh, glimpses here and there of what was the war about. And of course the war is between uh, good and evil. And um, the angels being of course on the good side and the jinn at the time being on the bad side. So, So why is our planet so eating? Okay, salamu alaikum wa alaikum wa salam. One of this, uh, the question says that why do we, in the Quranic surahs, we seek protection from the jinn? Uh, the reason being is that the jinn, uh, Iblis is one of the jinn. Uh, Iblis is also made of fire. And this is why he said, that I'm greater than him. And uh, jinn, now they are the offsprings of Iblis. They are the offsprings of Iblis. They are Aulad Iblis. They are the sons of Iblis. And they are um, uh, given the the task to mislead the human beings, mislead them. Um, this is what jinn is, and they live. They live among us. Uh, some people that we say they're possessed by the jinn is because of their deeds. And sometimes you find some of the bashar, uh, some of the mankind, one of the some of the human beings that are worse than the the jinn. So jinn that are the offsprings of Iblis. That's why we say, may Allah um, uh, give us refuge. Uh, we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We seek protection from the jinn. And uh, that's why we say, A'udhu billah min shaytan rajim I seek refuge from the shaytan rajim And uh, shaytan alayhi la'ainullah is from the jinn. Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum wa salam. And Iblis ask for Allah mercy on the day of judgment. Are you trying to avoid being sent to hell? No. One of the questions says, Salaamu Alaikum Alaikum Salaam. Will Iblis ask for Allah mercy on the day of judgment? Will he try to avoid being sent to hell? No. Iblis, because of his pride, he still has that pride. He still thinks he's better. He is made of fire and made of, uh, and the humans are made of uh, mud or dust. Uh, so Iblis, never submits. He will never submit. Iblis, 6,000 years, as Amir al-Mu'minin, sallallahu alayhi wa said, with this action, he destroyed all the ibadah. So, never. He will never submit. He will never ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he will end in hellfire. That's, uh, Some of the questions are very lengthy, so I take a screenshot from them so we can go through them next class. I have a question about Surat al -Safat.
One of the ask, questions is asking that this person has been working for 15 years and I have tried to so hard uh, to progress, but I get deeply upset as someone else who has been, who had been more success than me. This person says I almost, I almost uh, hate the person. And um, uh, so we spoke about jealousy in one of the topics. Um, thinking ill on the other person that may Allah take away what they have. This is not a good quality for a person to have. This is something bad. This is what jealousy is. Ghabta is uh, the opposite of it. That you don't uh, wish ill on them. But what you say is that may Allah give them more and may Allah give me. The, the Lord that gave them, of course, he can give me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has all the treasures of this, of this world. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can also give me some of that. Um, looking at uh, the success of others, yes, you, you might see some people, they might be working in some areas less than you, but they are more successful. This is one of the tests Allah wants to put you in, that even though you've been working in this job for much more uh, than them, more time than them, or you've been more giving more efforts to this, but you haven't become, you haven't become successful. Uh, successful of this person Allah wants to judge you Allah wants to uh, test you to see you are you going to you know fail the test or pass the test and we spoke about this in um, the jealousy class um, the hasad class uh, Allah wants there is different types of people you look at the one who is beneath you never look at the one who is above you in ibadah in recitation of the Quran, in akhlaq, look at the one who is above you. That can I become better than them with my ibadah, with my fasting, with my recitation of the Quran. But when it comes to the worldly things, always look at the one who is beneath you. Yes, I, this person might be working there, is more or she's more successful than me in their job. But there are hundreds of other people that are being their job more than me and they are no more successful than me. And actually they are much more behind. I'm, um, you know, I progressed much better than them. So always looking at this, that there are two different types of people, of course. You have people that are more successful and you have people that are not. So uh, for this person, I think it's better for you to sit down and make it right, you know, Never have hatred of anyone, uh, not to be, be better, uh, completely private and you know hidden. This happens with everyone. It's not just by for one person. Uh, in in all walks of life, you know, you might see people being respected more than you, and you, they don't be, they don't deserve that respect, and you deserve it much more than them. Or they or they are more wealthy than you, and you've been working much harder than them, even though they are you know, lazier, uh, they don't work that much, or whatever it is, it uh, shows that there are different types of tests. Allah doesn't, uh, this is an ayah we have in the Quran, Kareem, Allah says that in one of the surahs, I think it was surah al, um, uh, if I'm not wrong, it was surah al-Dukhan, um, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we created you to test you. We did not create you, yet you go to, um, heaven or hell as you please. No, we created you to test you. Um, I'm just looking for the ayah. It's a beautiful ayah that shows that we have, um, uh, no, it's not Surah Al-Dukhan. I think it was, um, it's another surah. I'm not sure which surah it was, but it's one of the surahs that we recite in the nights of Qadr. The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I created you to test you. Um, if I remember, I, I put the ayah next time. So, uh, Surah Al-Ankabut, yeah, it might be Surah Al-Ankabut, Ahsantu. Yeah, it's just uh, too early in the morning for me, so still processing. Surah Al-Ankabut, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this, that we created you to test you. 
So in different walks of life, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alif la meem, ahasib al-nas, an yutraku, an yaqulu, amanna, wa hum la yuftanu. That you just say, uh, you know, I submit to God, and there is not going to be any test, <laughs> and وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ Of course, this came to others, this test. Not just you. Some people fail. Some people, they don't fail. They succeed. So, <clears throat> look at people in their different types of life. There is always different types of people. We have more wealthy, more stronger, more beautiful, all this. And you saw that we spoke about that. And there is a hadith, actually, that talks about that beauty fades away. Uh, that we mentioned in one of the um, ways of person to take away his pride, that he has to look at the big picture. You know, this beauty will fade away. This wealth will go. It came and will go. It doesn't last forever. Qarun Ha, was the wealthy of, of the of mankind <coughs> <coughs> and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> took away his wealth so um, could you please upload the slides yes of course I have been uploading all of them I don't know if I uploaded the last one but I will upload the last one and this one as well inshallah with the link for the YouTube video of this lesson Yes, there are adriya uh, that you can read uh, about this. Uh, a person is asking, are there any Quranic verses or um, of Ar uh, or the, uh, any of the adriya to overcome arrogance? There is a book called Iksir Ex al-Da'wat. Iksir al-Da'wat. Uh, this book, uh, it's a wonderful book, has uh, ahraz, has adriya, um, one of the ideas there, it's about takabra, I think. Uh, I will post this also on uh, on the Telegram page. It's called Iksir Da'wat. If you uh, download it, you can download it with a PDF file online. It's called Iksir Da'wat. There's another book called Mujarrabat al Imamiya. Uh, they have this ahraz, hirz, and we have the benefits of the ayat or the benefits of the surahs, the Quran al Karim. That you can recite the surah, this has this benefit, that surah has this benefit of health, of wealth, and so on and so forth. Takabur is more of a person's feeling, you know. Um, when a, you find a kid to become mutakabur of some toy that they possess, you can see how silly it is. That when we become older, we might be proud of my house. It's the same thing. When a person becomes more mature, they understand that this attitude is not right. Um, that it's not something that it's in my best interest to have it. So I have become... I have okay, this is a good question. It says, I have, I have become more religious than before and I have been starting to feel proud because of it. Uh, what can I do to cure this uh, pride? I find myself comparing myself, myself to other people who are not religious. I try not to think this way, but uh, my mind goes in there subconsciously whenever I open social media. Well. Uh, we spoke about this when we um, went uh, over the topic sincerity. If you're doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the conditions of your amal to be accepted is that you are sincere. قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَاي وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِ Say that my salah, my nusuk, Whatever I do is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for a person to be become religious, and we have this in every community, as soon as you see them read more Quran or having the tasbih in their hand more than any other people, they think themselves that are higher than anyone else. Uh, religious acts, recitation of the Quran, 
prayer, hajj, umrah, whatever it is, working in the community, being a volunteer, uh, it's what? It is uh, not going to be accepted if you don't have sincerity. Actually, this brings you to become more sincere, mukhlas, and more mutawadha in your action. So this is one of the problems that we face today, that when they see themselves be more religious, they think they are better than others. So with the condition of your acceptance of the of the amal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts a condition with it, that your amal will not be accepted unless you are sincere. When you are sincere with your amal, you will not have any of this uh, you know, pride in yourself, that I am proud of my amal. Uh, for example, they came to Imam Zain al-Abidin, see, see the idea of the Ahlul Bayt, how they acted and how we, some people in the community act. They came to Imam Zain al-Abidin, one of his companions, and he said to the Imam, he said to the Imam, Sayyidi Umar, you either crying for your father's martyrdom, or you are fasting, Oh, you are praying. Zain al-Abidin. He's called Zain al-Abidin. Wa Sayyid al-Sajideen. Zain al-Abidin means what? The adornment of the Ubad, of the worshippers. Wa Sayyid al-Sajideen. And the master of the prostrators. He came to the Imam, this companion, and said to the Imam, Sayyid al this is enough. Look how, how much you're doing. And it, and you are the grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They, Thinking of the Imam is different. Here he doesn't say, yes, you are right. What am I doing? All this time I'm crying or I'm fasting or I'm praying. The Imam said to him uh, that my grandfather, Amir al-Mu'mineen, whenever he stood to pray, he started to shake from the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who am I to compare myself to Ali ibn Abi Talib? What are you talking about? I'm not anywhere near to Amir al muminin my grandfather. And you're telling me it's enough, all my ibadah. And see Ahl al-Bayt, they look at someone who's above them. He says, Amir al muminin look at Amir al muminin my grandfather. That Amir al muminin of his prayer and his worship, he was known to do all this worship, all this ibadah. So this is Amir al-Mu'mineen, salam Allah. I'm nowhere near Amir al-Mu'mineen, salam Allah. So the thinking of the Imam is this, to summarize it, is this, that there is always someone who's above me. And this is Imam saying that. The Amir al-Mu'mineen's ibad. And then you come to the other Imams. For example, Imam al-Sadiq, he had a similar story. that he talks about Amir al-Mu'mineen, tawadu. And what Amir al-Mu'mineen used to eat and wear. This was Imam al-Sadiq, salam Allah So you find Ahl al-Bayt walking in this direction. They never came and they said, I'm proud of my actions. Look at me, I'm complete. I'm done, I'm full. I'm flawless. There's no way for improvement. Ahl al-Bayt, they don't need to improve, of course. But their ibadah, he always says, I am not even near to my grandfather, Ali ibn Abi Talib. So when it comes to a person who's religious in the community, you always want to think, okay, if I'm religious, if I'm doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it doesn't come with pride or arrogance. It's not a package that I need. That is something that is not needed. With that, I need tawadha. That I become more tawadha. Don't forget this, that sometimes in the community, some people, you find them. They might be the ones who clean the community center. That, um, they might be the ones who, who cook. They might be the, the ones who drive the Molana from here to there. And the, uh, they might be the ones, they don't have this status in the community. They sit down in the center of the majlis. They, um, they are respected, but, but they are one of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though people might look down to them, you know, they might say, look at that guy, you know, he's no one. He just comes here to vacuum the Hussainis. And yet he's one of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because of his tawadah, he's not mutakabbar. So always, you have to have this in mind, that there are always people above me. And I have to look 
and the people who are above me. Remind yourself of this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In life, in what we have in this life, from houses and cars and whatever it is, look at the one who is beneath you. And in next life, in the hereafter, in the ibadah, in worship, in salah, in song, look at the one who is above you. So you know the direction to look at. In ibadah, always look at the one who is above you. Yes, he went to Hajj this year. Inshallah, this next year I go to Hajj. I don't miss out. They went to Ziyarat Arba'in. Inshallah, this year I go to Ziyarat Arba'in. I don't miss out like I missed out last year. He's praying Salat al layl Let me get up and pray Salat al layl as well. He recited Quran. Let me get up and learn how to recite Quran. He's fasting in the month of Rajab and Sha'ban. Why don't I also fast? This is a place you want to, you know, uh, have this race with others and you want to, you know, inshallah, overcome them and have more than them. So this is the part you want to look at the people who are above you. We are all the siblings of the Imams. Yeah, I have read that. Uh, I don't understand this. Uh, the question uh, it says that we are all the siblings of the Imam. Okay, I have read that Ja'far, the brother of Imam al Hassan al Askari, claimed to be the Imam after him. Ja'far al Kadab, some people called him, some people called him Ja'far al Nar. Uh, because he wasn't a good person. Well, we have a hadith that he later on repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ja'far al-Kaddab al or Ja'far al-Nar, the brother of Imam Hassan al-Askari, when he stood to pray Salat al-Janazah um, for the Imam, Imam al-Hujjah salamu Allah alayhi, he came out of the room and he moved his uncle, he said to his, his uncle, move uncle, I'm entitled to pray on uh, for my father, not you. And he moved away. And we have a hadith that he repented later on. Um, so the Imam stopped him at uh, at the place. He didn't let him to pray. Um, <clears throat> Inshallah, I will be posting the... Inshallah. Zuhud is a different thing. We were speaking about Zuhud, Inshallah, in one of our lessons. We have more lessons coming. It's a thick book. I showed you. It's a very big book. So if there's something missing here and there, be patient with me. Everything will be going in line. So this is the second uh, lesson about the diseases of the soul. The first one was about jealousy. And now we're speaking about pride. And Inshallah, we will go uh, on with other lessons as well, Inshallah, in the, in the next le lessons. Uh, if there is one thing missing here or there, um, I will, inshallah, cover it uh, in the next lesson. We are going uh, three um, uh, lessons per week, so be patient with me. If there's something missing here or there, uh, inshallah, we will cover it in the next lessons, inshallah. Uh, we conclude with Dua al Faraj with the history and appearance of Imam Sahab al Asri al Zaman. Ajallah ta'ala Farajah al Sharif. May Allah hasten his reappearance. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma kulla waliyika al-hujjat ibn al-Hasan salawatika alayhi wa ala abaih fi hadhi al-sa'a wa fi kulli sa'a waliyan wa hafiza wa qa'idan wa nasara wa dalilan wa ayna hatta tuskinahu ardaka tawa'a wa tumatta'ahu fiha tawila. Ya Rabbi al-Husayn, bhaq al-Husayn, ishfi sadr al-Husayn, bhuhur al-Hujjat. Thank you brothers and sisters for tuning in. Insha'Allah, we went back to the same um, inshallah, uh, schedule that we had before the night of Qadr. Everything is back, inshallah. We see you in the next lesson, inshallah, on um, Friday, my Friday. Uh, same timing, inshallah, uh, and uh, with another lesson, inshallah, next, uh, uh, inshallah, next lesson on Friday, and then on uh, my Sunday, you Saturday, inshallah. The timing is the same, inshallah, at the same days and the same times. I will be posting the YouTube link and the, the previous slides, the previous lesson slide, and this slide as well on the Telegram page. Hada wa alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa afdhul salati wa salam ala muhammadin wa ala tayyibin al-tahirin.